principles. One, the decision on of whether to dehorn a rhino population or not, the study says or reveals that it depends on a number of factors, including the level of poaching threat, the level of security in place, the availability of funds and the size, location and distribution of the rhino population in question. In summer, the study says this is actually what it, the, the, the dehorning consideration should depend on. And due to the invasive nature of and expense associated with dehorning, the intervention we say should only be considered under conditions of relatively severe poaching threat. And dehorning should only be considered where a baseline level of security is in place. Otherwise, rhinos are highly likely to be poached regardless of their horn status. We know that people have got an argument about this point, but there's still need for debate uh, with regards to this matter. We do believe that because that one does still grow, and any other poacher who comes at night in darkness or so, Dr. Mabunda will talk about the moonlight and the full moon and so on, uh, <laughs> may not even be aware that this uh, rhino has got no horn and, and kill it anyway. So those are some of the issues that we still have to uh, really consider. And uh, where there is no realistic expectation of implementing adequate security in a reasonable time frame to protect vulnerable populations, translocation of rhinos uh, to more secure places is a preferable option rather than to uh, dehorning. If dehorning is to be undertaken, an attempt should be made to dehorn the entire adult population in small populations, although the, practically, uh, the practicality of total dehorning will depend on various factors, including terrain, habitat, and the rhino density or uh, density. All dehorning should be done as a short time, a time uh, as possible, uh, in a short space of time as possible to minimize potential behavioral impacts associated with having some individual rhinos horned and others without horns, although such impacts are not necessarily significant. And in larger reserves or populations, dehorning can be practiced strategically to reduce the vulnerability of high visible uh, in, uh, individual rhinos along boundaries and fence lines and so on. We know that rhinos move, but there are those uh, which we know actually are always or more often than not along those fences. The ideal frequency of dehorning will depend on the level of threat under conditions of severe threat. Uh, rhinos should be re, uh, re uh, dehorned every 12 to 24 months under conditions of immediate threat every 24 to 36 months. Uh, uh, that and that should suffice. Dehorning is likely to be most uh, effective if practiced by all of us or a significant proportion of the rhino owner reserves uh, in a given area.